people who will trick on you and deny to yourself. Okay. All right, well, I, uh, I'm kind of trying to I brought a bunch of mm. things to read at one point, so I can bore you to tears with that, but I can promise you that one thing is something that no one has heard yet, and that's actually for uh, book four, Protocol. Oh, uh, nice. The prologue in chapter one. Um, I started writing, wow. I started seriously writing back in 2003. Before then, I started writing, oh, back in 1988 when I started working on my great American novel. And I proceeded to work on that on and off for a couple of years. In fact, for my first child's uh, baby shower, my former best friend had one of those uh, questionnaires, you know, these little games for the new mom and the new dad. And one of the questions was, how long has Jackie been working on her book? And the correct answer, of course, was forever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be her anymore. <laughs> but I, uh, I started getting really serious about wanting to write professionally around 2003. And um, that's when I dusted off the great American novel, which uh, I was calling contemporary fantasy because I really didn't know the term urban fantasy. And that wouldn't have really hit it properly anyway. Um, Stop me if you've heard this one before. When you have kids around college age, maybe a little younger from here, wind up there in a place where magic is real. And, ooh, there's a magic item that one of them happens to have, and suddenly everyone wants Stop. it. Stop. <laughs> 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 oh, and um, I also, of course, had to have the almost all nouns initial caps. And um, if the names had apostrophes in them, the more the better. You know, um, Dungeons & Dragons Root Showing Um I, I know that feeling. <laughs> so, you know, I was working on it and working on it and working on it. And uh, by 2004, January 2004, I finished the great American novel. And I was thrilled. And I learned how to write a query letter, albeit poorly. And then I started querying in uh, February 2012. By January 2005, I scored triple-digit rejection letters. You know how they say, don't take things like that personally? Um, they never received triple-digit <laughs> rejection letters. That, that stung. But, okay, you know what? Eventually, I can take a hint, um, especially when my husband says, Jackie, please, try writing something else. I'm like, okay. <laughs> um, so I set aside my, my great American novel with its love of all things magic, and I started writing something lighthearted and fun. He said, hey, Jackie, remember the time you worked in that sex shop? Why didn't you write about that? <laughs> I saw you look. <laughs> yeah, um, this was right after college. Um, I wasn't exactly the brightest bulb. I waited until, let's see, I graduated in June, so I waited till May to decide, oh, I actually want to stay here in Massachusetts instead of go home to New York. I guess I should get a job. Okay, yeah, so I didn't even know that I needed to have a resume ready to go. Woohoo, you rock! <laughs> we have books! Yay! Um, Excellent. So I started looking for a job in my local town, and um, there was this one store that had a sign that said Help Wanted, and this store was known to be the sex shop, um, where, you know, you look in the window and it's got clothing in it. It's, you know, seems to be a clothing store. Okay, but everyone knows about the sex shop. Okay, well, I needed a job. So I go in. This sex goddess behind the counter, this is all true, I swear to God. And she's like five foot ten, blonde hair, you know, spray on tan, thin and gorgeous, <laughs> has, you know, looks, you know, she looks me up and down as I walk in. And she's can I help you? And I said, Yeah, I'm here for the job. And she, then she gives me a double tape and she says, Really? <laughs> yes. Um, that was warning warning number one. I was incredibly surprised. So she said, all right, let me uh, get you the form to fill out. I said, great. And I didn't even know what I was applying for. I figured, okay, job, right? And so I start filling out the form. She says, well, why don't you come back here where there's a counter for you to lean on? I said, sure. So she takes me to that fabled back room, and wow, I see tons of sex toys. I see tons of things that I don't know what they are. I see outfits that I would die before I would wear. I see outfits that I think I might want to wear. I see all of these <laughs> different things, and I'm totally flustered, and I still need a job. So I said, okay. And I said, by the way, what is this job for? She says, oh, the receiving job. And at this point, there's just too many jokes for me to even, you know, <laughs> say anything coherent. So I just, you know, filling out, filling out. And then I meet the store manager, and we go downstairs.
Manifest, I swear there's a point, I will come back to the writing, I promise. And the store manager takes me downstairs to her office, and if you have never, ever interviewed for a job when there are walls of penises hanging up, you you just haven't learned. Happens to me all the time. Yeah! Um, I, I'm, I'm biting my tongue on this one. <laughs> it was um, colorful. And I mean that about some of the penises, too. Some of them were like, pretty colored. Um, yeah, dildos. Wow. Um, but it was interesting. And, um, of course, when the manager, her name was Tammy, said, so tell me why you would like to work here. And, of course, I give the standard answer because I'm a people person. <laughs> yeah, so I get the job. Uh -huh. Again, this is all real. Um, I get the job, and um, the next day is when I start because it's, you know, one of those jobs. Great. Start right away. And so my my supervisor, her name is Tiffany, she's fabulous. She loves me, and she decides that I'm her office elf. And I say, great elf, here you go. Take this box of stuff that just came in. you got to check it against the list to make sure that all the items that we received are the items that, that we ordered. I mm -hmm. said, I can do that. And then I open up the box, and no, I really can't because I don't know what these things are. So I'm, I'm trying to compare and contrast and, you know, process of elimination. And I very quickly learned the difference between a ball spreader and a ball stretcher. And anyway, so this, <laughs> this was the job that I had for two months. And this is what my husband said that I should write about. Oh, I almost forgot. Um, the owner of the store, God bless him. He came up to me after, I think, my second day there, and he introduced himself to me as Vernon Gregor Diana Hunt. It's all the same to me. <laughs> yes. So my dad, my dad, when he heard that I was going to start to write about my time in the store, he said, I've got the perfect title. He said, call it, hey, Charles, your slip is showing. I said, oh, my God, I love it. So this is now January 2000. No. Yes, January 2005. I told you it was all going to circle back. And I decide to write this chiclet novel, Hey Charles, your slip is showing. So I do. And I write it in five months, which is much better than the, like, 17 years that my great American novel had taken me. Um, and then I start querying again. And yes, I get the rejection letters, but, but, big difference. For my great American novel, all those rejection letters, most of them were form rejection letters. That's when you get, you know, the undated, dear author, thank you so much for submitting your work. Unfortunately, we don't feel that it's right for us at this time. Good luck. We wish you all the success. Sincerely, the editor. Uh, yeah, I think that I've quoted, I would say, about 90% of the form letters that mm. I wound up receiving. If you're lucky, um, you get like a handwritten signature. Um, every once in a great while you get, you know, like something personalized by whoever was looking at it. Um, and I said the editor's actually the agent because I was looking for a literary agent. My favorite rejection was when I got my own form letter, my own uh, query letter back with a big no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, this time when I got rejection letters for uh, Charles, I got about 40 of them and almost all of them were personalized rejection letters. They were not the forms, and almost all of them said the same thing. They loved the first person sassy narrator, loved the voice, loved it, loved it, loved it, loved the humor. They'd seen the story before them. Like, you did? Oh my gosh, I didn't realize there were so many stories about working in a sex shop. <laughs> um, and so then I said, great, I apparently suck at this writing thing. What am I going to do now? Because this is my dream. I really, really wanted to write. I've wanted to write ever since I was in sixth grade when I would just get, you know, creative writing assignments in English and I'd write an additional five pages for it because I just really love the storytelling. So at this point, I'm sincerely, I'm seriously depressed. And uh, I'm actually going to therapy for a bit because I'm real, I've just, I've hit the wall. I'm, I'm flustered. I don't know what to do because... I know I'm not going to quit my day job anytime soon, but this is what I want to do, and what am I supposed to do now? So as I talk at all my angst about my mom uh, with my therapist, um, don't ask what my mom has to do with this. It's just, you know, if I'm a therapist, it's got to be my mom's fault. Um, <laughs> and uh, meanwhile, I'm still looking at a couple of sites. There's one called Media Bistro, 